Okay, aloha and welcome everyone to this live Healing Moments webinar. Um, so grateful to have everybody here today to talk about you are a light worker and what a beautiful topic it is this time of light and love. Um, January is always a, a month that makes me feel like it's a, a lighted month uh, because it's the, it's the one month. It's about new beginnings and the creator force light. So um, as we begin, I just want to put it right out front that Healing Moments is a program that offers a spiritualist perspective on what's happening in the world. And as we tune into our hearts and find answers to life's big questions, we move forward into the new dimensional energies. So I wanna welcome everyone here today and invite you to just sit back and relax for a moment and take some nice deep breaths. Take five deep breaths. And as you do, I'll call upon the creator's light, the Christ light, the goddess light, and the trinity of these three where we are centered within gives us the truth trust and passion of our light on mother earth and we call upon this force of light workers awakening and we feel it within our hearts because that is the source the con connection to the source of our light and we call forth the love of the master emotep the master guide kiro master kahu fred master jesus and all the blight masters Lady Kuan Yin, the goddess weave of love, and Mother Allura, Pele Kino Ahane, and all the energies of love that guide us in this journey on earth. We pray now that our Healing Moments program be an expression of the highest light of love, and everything that comes through us this day be from our hearts in love, and we're so humbly grateful for this opportunity to gather as light workers awakening on Mother Earth. And so it is in love. Amen. So welcome everyone again. And if you have a question, please, um, you can put it in the chat. I'm on Facebook Messenger. I've got that running. Um, or you can raise your hand and, you know, ask on, on the program live. Um, I'd be happy to answer your question. So welcome to this creator month of January. And according to the Lemurian numerology that we have from Master Guide Kirill and Fred Sterling, my mentors, um, this is the creator force energy this, this month. Can you feel it? I, mean, I can already feel it. This energy that encourages us to have a new start and to look at things in a new way and to light up what needs to be lit up and there's a lot that needs to be lit up these days. <laughs> That's why we're grateful that light workers are awakening around the planet. And um, so it's a creator force energy. Something new is ready to be created. So when you connect into this creator force energy within you, yes, happy new year, <laughs> by the way. Thank you, Mahina Kuhu. Uh, and we would connect into this creator force energy we feel that. And so I want to draw your attention to the numerology of this month and some of the events that are coming forth, because there is a there is a date uh, of all ones coming up one eleven one one one, and it'll be in a year of two zero two two. So there's a powerful vortex of energy there numbers coming together. Um, when it comes together like that, it is it is a nine energy if you add all the energy all the numbers together because we're in a six year and those three ones make an, a three to bring us to nine. What a beautiful energy and Master Guide Kirill has shared with us over the years that this is the birthday of Mary Magdalene. And so when you get into that vortex of the one, 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 sit in the center of the Trinity of truth, trust and passion in your meditation that day, and call in the light essence of Mary Magdalene. And it is such a powerful thing to do any day, but especially on that day when we're celebrating her goddess light. 
Um, and so there's other things coming up, but first, before we do that, I wanna pick a Lemurian prophecy card for our gathering today. So I've got my prophecy cards right here, and I love doing the Lemurian prophecy card readings for people because it's so much fun. Let's get that right. Okay, so I'm gonna shuffle the cards as I do five times because five is the number for love. And if you want to um, learn more about the Lemurian numerology, you can find a, a brief guide to it on my website in the uh, Lemurian Wisdom blog, or you can have a, a reading where we'll work with the cards and um, I can even teach you how to do it because it's, it's pretty simple, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, so everybody on the call, put your energy into the Lemurian Prophecy cards. And we have five of us here live today, and that is a beautiful number. Okay, so let's see what we get. Okay, this is so perfect, guys. We have the King of hearts, okay? So the way that the cards work, there are four suits, right? And so the diamonds are the physical body. They represent the four aspects of who we are as humans, the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. The spades are the spiritual, the clubs are the mental, and the hearts are the emotional body. So here we have the love of the emotional body and the king represents focus, action, moving forward. It's the divine masculine within all of us, but it's also that energy that encourages us to take steps forward in love. So what a perfect card, don't you think? Perfect card for today. And we just keep our card right there because it gives us a focus for our talk about you are a light worker. And I, I want to talk about also about the January energies. So let me get this in here uh, in the beginning, because we are in <clears throat> an incredible month for the planet Venus. And the planet Venus is the representation of our goddess light. And it's a planet that represents the goddess light. So when you look outside uh, in the evening or in the morning, wherever Venus happens to be, you're looking at the energy, the representation of the goddess light and as above, so below. So we're looking up, but we're feeling it within ourselves. So it's a beautiful connection that you can make, but you won't see Venus right now because these next two days, today and tomorrow, she is with the sun and she's completing her cycle. It's so exciting. This only happens every about 18 months. So Venus's cycle is uh, 584 days thereabouts, right? So it's about 18 months that she goes through her morning star phase, her evening star phase, and then she goes retrograde. So at this time, Venus is retrograde and with the sun. Now, first of all, when a planet is with the sun, that is a time when it's gathering creator source energy and it's the creator month. I mean, this is so perfect, right? So it, it, the Venus is with the sun, she's retrograde. Now, do you, do you remember what retrograde means? Because I've talked about Mercury retrograde before, but Venus retrograde, anytime a planet is in retrograde motion, that just means from our perspective on earth, it appears that that planet is going backwards. Normally the planets move in a particular motion, but when it's in retrograde, it's going backwards from our perspective. And it gives us an opportunity to reflect, to go back and review things, to um, reconsider, to listen and become more receptive. Now, when Venus is retrograde, it really is a time for receptivity because the planet Venus is the goddess light, but it also represents our relationships, um, our values, what we consider important, 
what matters to us, that's a representation of Venus. And we all have Venus somewhere on our blueprint, in our natal chart, right, our life plan. So if you don't know where your Venus is, you know, you can always, you know, have a reading and figure out with me <laughs> or anybody and figure out where your Venus is or there's ways of figuring it out too. And then you'll know what is that, what is your Venus energy and how is it being affected by this retrograde cycle right now? Now the retrograde cycle doesn't go very long. It only goes, um, I think to the 29th of this month. Yes, the 29th. Um, is when Venus turns direct. That's where we feel the motion coming, coming forward. Now in this retrograde time, it's really interesting because it might be a time when you um, return to relationships that you had previously. And I actually have a friend who uh, broke up with her, her boyfriend and just right about the time when Venus turned retrograde, they got back together again. <laughs> And I was like, what? You know, I didn't say anything, but I was like, whoa, you know? And, and now they have this period of time to kind of get, you know, back together and see that, you know, they're, they might not know that they're under Venus retrograde. In fact, I'm sure they don't know. But we're all, even if we don't know it, we're under the influence of these energies, right? I told you, as above, so below. And so we can understand how these energies affect us or you know what is that what how can we work with the energies let's put it that way because we as my um astrologer um, mentor kaylin castell always says we inform the mysteries as much as they inform us so what we're taking away from the venus retrograde is part partly us and then we project that up into venus in her retrograde cycle so it's like a cycle of love that's happening so take a look uh in these next days if you don't see people coming back into your lives maybe that have been um absent for a while or you have reflections on um you know what matters to me what are, what are my values? And, you know, when you see things going on out in the world and you think about, you know, you know, that really matters to me. I'm going to send light. I'm going to pray. I'm going to meditate. Okay. So that's our segue into our topic. So if you have any questions about that, um, um, here's, a, here's something from um, Sandra. I've been having more clarity on personal issues seemingly in line with what Master Guide Kiro prophes prophesied uh, being needed for everyone this year, right? There was a, <clears throat> a wonderful session with Master Guide Kiro, and you can access that um, on the website kirael.com, K-I-R-A-E-L. And that is, uh, it's a membership uh, conscious creators. So um, Sandra goes on, so maybe personal issues can be more easily resolved now, we'll see. Yes, and I think it's a, it's a time for us all to focus on it, to put our, put our light on it and focus on it and see if it brings new clarity to it because it's all about us, right? Our relationships, um, the people out there in our lives are just reflections of what's going on in here. So we can use those relationships to um, give us insights to what, what is our healing? You know, what's my part in this? You know, how, how is this person reflecting what's within me? And that's really empowering. That's a beautiful goddess light understanding of relationships. So Sandra, thank you so much for that. Um, okay. I'm going to keep my eye on the chat in case there's something there and also on, on messenger. So Venus is in retrograde. I want to say that that means this short retrograde, she has two retro, uh, she has a retrograde period and this is the end of her cycle. And she's going from the evening. If you've been, if you watch Venus, it's really easy to find Venus because she's so bright. Um, that's our, our neighbor planet, right? And she's got this atmosphere that reflects the light. So it's so bright. Um, has been in the evening sky and now is going is with the sun 
it's going between the sun and the earth. I'm gonna, she's gonna rise in the morning sky. So about, I think it's about the 14th of, yes, 14th, 15th, something like that. It depends on uh, if you have mountains or you know, if you can clearly see the horizon in the morning in the east, look for Venus because she's gonna be rising as a Capricorn goddess. Now, if you wanna know more about the Capricorn energy, that's the, that's the um, wise elder, the Kupuna energy, what we need right now, you know? So she's gonna be rising as a morning star. So please watch for that about mid month uh, and keep watching if you, can't, if you can't see her right before the sun rises. Um, keep looking and she'll become more and more apparent as we go through the month. And when we uh, also on that same day, the 14th, Mercury is going to go retrograde. So there's, a, there's an amazing kind of energy between Venus and Mercury happening this month. So when Mercury goes retrograde, Mercury is the planet that, that, um, that is about communications, um, technology and things like that. So this is a time when everybody says, oh, back up your computer and be careful signing contracts. This is also, just like I said, a time for reflection. So if you've been engaged in projects or you've been engaged in these, you know, communications things, just take some time to reflect where you are and how you can move forward. That's all that I feel like we do with, with retrograde uh, motion planets. We really take it as a time to get clarity and reflect. And then we can progress forward uh, in a more focused way. So that's just my little bit on astrology, which I love, I love to do because it's so insightful and it really helps with our, our signature cell healing, which is what I'm mainly focused on, right? The signature cell healing is a Lemurian healing modality uh, from Kahu Fred Sterling, my mentor. And I'm really grateful to be later this year doing um, more online workshops uh, for signature cell healing and then eventually getting back out on the road to do them in person. So I look forward to that. <clears throat> so let's, let's talk about our topic for today and chime in anytime you have questions about you are a light worker. And when I say that to people, sometimes you know, and really everyone on the planet is a light worker, but there are some people that, first of all, might be, that might bring up fear for them. Like, you know, what does that mean? You know, I don't want to shine my light because then I might get cut down. So then if you've seen my little um, video, it, uh, it's on the Healing Moments Web page and uh, it's in my YouTube. So if you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel, you got a notification and you can see it in there, Karina Nielsen. And I'll make it more obvious on my website. Um, you are a light worker. So there's a metaphor that Master Guy Kiro shared with us called the metaphor of the lawnmower and the grass lawn. So here's how that goes. This is like light workers awakening. So when the lawnmower, you know, think about, and I'm hearing a lawnmower right now, or my neighbor is cutting his lawn, which is really hilarious. Okay, because the sun is out today, it stopped raining, people are out mowing their lawns. So what does that mean? So the lawnmower starts up and each individual blade of grass knows that the lawnmower is coming. <clears throat> and they feel, <clears throat> excuse me, And they feel this energy that they're gonna get cut down. And they know at that time, it's the time to pump up their light. So every grass, blade of grass is pumping up their, their energy and getting into a growth phase. So when the lawnmower comes, which they know it will, they're gonna get cut down, but they're gonna grow up even stronger. <clears throat> Whoa, excuse me. So this is, take light workers, for example. A lot of times we put our light out there 
and there might be you know people around us or situations that really make us want to you know pull back and say you know i'm not going out there you know it's scary out there i'm i'm not going to shine my light even if i have to stay at home <laughs> and you know because that's what light workers do we don't have to go out and um you know shout from the rooftops that's not what we want to do we don't shout from the rooftops light workers simply go into meditation and amplify your light get into your heart and feel the love that you that you can send wherever it needs to go to a person to anyone i had a just had an email this morning um, from a client who she's actually from mexico but she ended up in vietnam <laughs> And she's not very happy there. It's just kind of different for her. And she needs to be there right now. And not to go into too much detail, but I immediately felt my, my heart open up and send just light in her direction and just find her, just feel like I could connect with her. And that's not something special that, that I do. I mean, I, can, I like to do it. And I think I'm pretty good at it, but anybody can do that. We all can do that. So if you have a, you know, you got a family member, let's say, and um, somebody is uh, maybe not on your good side, you know, you're struggling with that relationship, then get into meditation, say a prayer, do your five breath self-healing meditation, which you can find out more about on the signature cell healing dot com website light yourself up and see a beam of light going from your heart to that person and you don't have to have any agenda you don't have to have you know like i hope this person likes me now or anything like that do it from your heart do it fully in love and just send the light and let it go and give up any dependency on the outcome of that light going there or that healing going there and this is i'm telling you it works <laughs> it really works it's in fact sometimes it works so well that i get shocked myself that um, things shift to the highest light outcome for everybody involved and sometimes we might not be consciously aware of what that highest light outcome is because you know as humans we we really want things to go a certain way and it's hard to get out of our our mental frame of mind that says you know this is the way i want it to be but what if you could get away from that and just take a little bit higher perspective and look down on yourself and the situation or the other person and you and just get out of your body, go into meditation, just get up above and look down at what's going on and just put light into that relationship, put light into the situation and let it go and, and just see what happens. And don't, don't just stop with that, keep doing it. You know, This is the thing about light workers. We don't do it just one time and then that's it. We keep shining our light. We keep stay in light because it's so simple. I mean, it's so easy to um, feel discouraged and to backpedal a little bit and go, I'm, I'm so angry that didn't work. <laughs> or what is that person doing? You know, especially when you look at politics or you look at the news or you look at whatever's going on you know, in our uh, global pandemic or whatever's going on. It's so easy to get drawn into the doom and gloom, like I said on my webpage, you know, the doom and gloom, but it's a little more tricky to stay in our hearts and to be in love and to continue to be positive and to find the good in everything. And that sounds, you know, some people might think, well, that's really Pollyanna, Karina, you know, <laughs> how do you do that? Um, I just take it one step at a time, you know, and it's not like I've got it wired. 
I mean, there are times when, when I feel like, oh man, that didn't go the way I wanted, you know? Um, but there is a, there is a process that's unfolding and we have to remember we are in a great shift in consciousness. And that means we're going to have to be the light workers that bring the new light of love to this planet. And I think Master Guide, um, Master Emotep in the channeling for this month said it really well. There's an article, uh, a channeled article that um, I've got on my website in the channeled wisdom blog. And if you're on my um, newsletter list, my email list, you get a direct link as soon as that goes live. And um, he said, let us speak about the challenges you are experiencing as you move into this new year, political polarization, worldwide pandemic, global warming, and more. For some, this might not be what you call an easy time, but it is what you have come for. And you might go, what? I came for this, you know, huh? You know, yeah, we did. And then, and then uh, it goes on. Now, let me clarify that every one of you came for this great shift in consciousness. You raised your hand. You wanted to be here now. Yes, you did. Why? Because it is a momentous occasion to be a light worker in service to your creator, to evolve your light, and to play your part in this great shift. Now, I mean, how do you feel about that? Go ahead and, you know, chime in on that, because um, what is your part in the great shift? Do you, do you know why you're here? I mean, I work, you know, in, in uh, personal readings with people on helping them to discover this, but many people know that they're here to be a light worker in whatever way. And I'm not talking about they have to be, do readings or they have to be healers. What we're doing is shining our light in our own way. There are artists, there are, um, there are singers, there are um, musicians, there are people that are you know, working in companies that help people in so many different ways. Um, so, I mean, how, what is your part in this great shift? And it's time to think about that in this, in this month of Creator Force Light. Um, let's go, uh, I'm just checking out the chat now. Um, thank you, Sandra. The video on the lawnmower and the green lawn is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. And Tina asks, what does Lemuria and that energy have to do with this year? Will they help us? What is the effect of Lemuria plus 2022? Beautiful, um, Tina, thank you for that question. Um, first of all, this year, 2022 is a six year, so it's a mastery year. So it's gonna challenge all of us as light workers, first of all, to, um, to bring forth the great shift within all of us. So let's talk a little bit about what the great shift meant to the Lemurians. So the Lemuria, Lemuria just so you get my perspective on Lemuria, and I studied, I am a, uh, a student, a uh, prodigy of, of uh, Master Guide Kirill and Kahu Fred Sterling. They are my mentors. And we believe Lemuria was an enormous continent in the middle of the Pacific Ocean 40, 50,000 years ago with ancient uh, beings called the Lemurians. And in that time when they were on the earth plane, they were an evolutionary society like we are. And that means they, are, they were evolving from third dimensional life to fourth dimensional life to fifth dimensional life. And if you look, if you, I can highly recommend this book, which is Kira Lemurian Legacy for the Great Shift, which I helped publish. <laughs> so I really love it. And um, it's, it's just a beautiful um, compilation of energies of love about Lemuria. Um, they called it or we call it first life, common time and transition, third dimension, fourth dimension, fifth dimension. So at this time, 
you know, reflective of the Lemurians, we are moving from third to fourth and into the fifth dimension, right? And you can see third dimensional energies, that matrix of thought of the yin and the yang, good and bad. Um, I believe this, he believes that. Um, this is right, this is, that's wrong. So it's this polarity, um, this yin and yang that is trying to hold on while there is an energy of love that's being um, sent into the planet, which you can feel as a light worker and use to enlighten your journey. That is fourth dimensional, which is the balance of the four bodies, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. Fourth dimensional light and the thoughts of love that will elevate because four is also a number for thought. So as soon as you think it, tell me if this is not happening to you. As soon as you think it, you know, you think about somebody and, you know, they call you or they text you or something like that. I mean, the thought energy right now is extremely powerful. And that is an indicator of the, of the fourth dimensional energy coming to this planet. So we're in that transition phase right now, opening to the fifth dimensional energies of love. And the more we can center in that balance of the four bodies, the more open we'll be to that fifth dimensional energy of love. So that the Lemurians showed us the way. And when you begin to study what, what did the Lemurians know? And I, that's what my readings are about, right? Lemurian mentoring, Lemurian prophecy, Lemurian readings, because I really do feel that the, what the Lemurians left for us in you know, the channelings that, that come through, the energies of the Lemurians, that's here to help us now. And so um, let me skip back to your question again, Tina. Did that help to answer? <clears throat> Will they help us? I think they're helping us in that way in that they left these uh, important um, techniques and practices like signature cell healing is a Lemurian healing modality. Lemurian numerology opens us to guidance from, the, from our spiritual selves. Um, Lemurian prophecy cards, 10 principles of consciously creating were the, if you could call them laws of, of Lemuria. They didn't have laws. They had the 10 principles. And so you can you can look at the 10 principles on my website as well in the Lemurian Wisdom blog. And um, the Chancellor of Lemuria had some beautiful channelings last year about each of the 10 principles, which are also there. That's how I feel the Lemurians are helping us, but we've got to be open to that help, right? If, we, if we're going to be, if we're going to descend, and I know people who do this, they just really get angry or they descend into negativity. And the, the spiritual guidance can't reach us when we go that way. I mean, you get angry and you know something happens, your angels are gonna back off for a while because when we're angry, that's where the learning is. That's where we need to find out, okay, I don't feel 100% in love with this. So there must be something I need to learn here. So I think that is, that is um, the way the Lemurians are helping us, Tina, is through these, this great wisdom that, was, um, that is left for us to navigate our great shift. I hope that answers. And um, um, uh, uh, Mahina Ku shares, my light work is to bring spirit into matter in this third dimension and help with our transition into the fourth light. Well, that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And um, I would like to, that brought up a question in my mind for you, Mahina Ku, is how do you bring spirit into matter? I would like to, I would like you to expand on that. And um, Donna wants to know the name of the book. So the first book I was talking about, The Light Workers and the Lawn, is Guide to the Unseen Self. And that's what the little four minute video was about, is this in the very first chapter is about light workers. 
And I remember this was the first book I really, well, I worked on the Genesis Matrix, but this is the first one, my editing, cut my editing teeth on <laughs> this one. And it is a beautiful book because it has practical, um, really important information for us right now. It's about um, light workers. We even got a chapter on 9-11 in there because it happened right about that time. And um, karma, relationships, um, um, expanding your light body, um, the, the new chakras, the shifting light body, uh, people getting splinters, not understanding, you know, how do I elevate my spiritual life? It's in, it's in that book, Guide to the Unseen Self, and it's on signaturecellhealing.com in the store. You can find the ebook or the, the print book. And I highly recommend it because it, it just is, and it's something that I shared for Christmas presents this year because I think it's a good book to come into the idea about I'm a light worker. What does that mean? You know, I, I'm a spiritualist. What does that mean? You know, what does it mean that I have a relationship that could be karmic? And um, what do I do about that? <laughs> Especially if we're fighting all the time. So, I mean, this is a great book. And the other book that um, I talked about is about Lemuria is this one. It's just a little postcard, um, but it's Kirill Lemurian Legacy for the Great Shift. And there you see the Hawaiian Islands. I get this backwards. You see the Hawaiian Islands, which are the mountaintops of ancient Lemuria. And on the tops of all the mountains on the islands now was the location of the healing temples of Lemuria. So when you go to these spaces like Haleakala on Maui, you can feel the spiritual energy. I mean, they are sacred spaces. And to do ceremony or meditation at the tops of these mountains is just incredible. Um, so this is the this book is the book that will you know guide you, <clears throat> excuse me, through the through the energies of you know the the Lemurians and their their evolution from uh, first life, common time, and into transition. And what happened to the Lemurians? I mean, you can read about it in that book. Um, and I won't give that away because I do that in my readings too. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, I hope that helps, Donna. And then um, Mahina Ku shares, I bring spirit into matter with love energy, however it manifests. So that's a beautiful thing because that, that tells me you are a light worker, Mahina Ku, <laughs> and you're bringing the light in, uh, the spiritual light, and you're going you're gonna, to you know, send it to people. You're going to, you know, in your interactions with people, you're going to, you know, light up and share that. So that's a really good thing to remember is when we are in a situation where, oh my God, it doesn't feel that good right now. You know, I'm in a, I'm in a negative space, you know, people around me are, it's, it's feeling really negative and angry or, you know, just negative, maybe. What do we do? You know, because you can easily, anybody can easily get drawn into that light because you know we're we're light workers but we're still embodied and so we're still in the third dimension right so we can light up our light don't say you don't have to say anything just take a breath just take a few breaths you know i even have to do it really obviously but just you know feel your heart and go in there and just light up and then just start to shine just start to send the light out 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 and watch the energy shift around you. I, I ask you to try that this month and see what happens when you, when you light up your, your heart and you just let it emanate, emanate out as Master Imhotep likes to say, let it emanate out. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. <clears throat> it's a beautiful thing. Um, let's see. Uh, if you have questions, like I'll put out a reminder again, please go ahead and put them in the chat. I want to um, also remind you that we're going to do, speaking of emanating light out, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to have our, <clears throat> wow, 
We're going to have our global healing meditation for Mother Earth, which we do every moon cycle. So we do it three nights before the full moon. So this month, it's going to be uh, Friday, January 14th. And for more information about it, you can go to my website under events. It says global healing meditation, and you can click there. And the way that works is at 9 p.m. your local time, you get into meditation, send your light. You do, we do the five breath self-healing meditation first. And you can find out about that on um, uh, signaturecellhealing.com, how to do that. Or I, I teach that in the Signature Cell Healing workshops. Get into your meditation wherever you are at nine o'clock. Send your light down into Mother Earth and connect with her core. Then bring the light back up again into your heart again. And then send a strand of your light to Diamond Head in Honolulu. And there's a big picture of that in case you're not sure where it is. Just with your intention, send it to Diamond Head at nine o'clock your local time and send your light into the weave of energy that's there. There's a weave of energy in Diamond Head. And as we go time zone by time zone, it gets, it gets more woven, let's put it that way. And the spiritual energies, like the, you know, the goddess light and the angels and the guides and even the galactic forces <laughs> are coming in there to weave with us. And as that energy gets woven together, we take it, everybody takes it around the world. So as you're doing it, put your light into the diamond head and then take it around the world. Now, our focus has been for the last few months, healing the water systems of Mother Earth. And this is especially important to those of us here, on, well, everywhere, because there's water systems everywhere on the planet need healing. And it's, it's our survival, right? It's, it's how we, um, it's, it's everyone needs pure water. And so it, it, um, it behooves all of us to light up our water systems. And the shamanic elven masters have been working with us to heal the water systems of mother earth. Um, we started last year in the summer and our focus for me recently has been the aquifer the water system under this island of Oahu, which is uh, threatened at the moment by these enormous Navy fuel tanks that are at Red Hill. So these are old fuel tanks from World War II that were constructed to underground house this jet fuel that would be needed for the second world war and really nothing has been done to upgrade them or anything and there is a they have leaked there's a potential of them leaking and so we are lighting up that energy shielding the the aquifer and we're using our light energy to protect the water system of this island. So if you want to weave in with us on that, I would be so grateful. And um, any questions? Okay, so uh, Donna says, I missed what you said. The diamond card suit represents, do you mind? Uh, it's physical, it's the physical body. So um, just to finish that out on um, global healing meditation, I put it on Facebook, so um, get, on my Facebook, uh, Karina Nielsen, and uh, I send out uh, an event announcement there, or it's on my website, and you'll see it highlighted on the homepage that that day. Um, <clears throat> Donna, um, we said the um, I was going to tell you what I do every morning, and you can do this too. Is every morning get a deck of cards, shuffle the cards, and pick one. You can only, you can do one, I do five. I do one for the, um, the lead card. And then I do one for the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies. And um, then I do a little automatic writing. 
uh, from my guidance for that day. And I do it every day. It's a rare day that I don't do it. Um, I got to be in a real rush not to do it because it's so important to me. Um, so, and you don't have to do it like that, but you can, you can just choose one card, Donna, and get the message for what it is. So diamonds are the physical, hearts is the emotional, clubs are the mental, and um, spades are the spiritual. And then the numbers follow the, um, the Lemurian numerology. The jack is the child self. The queen is the goddess, your goddess light, you know, the uh, receptive part of who you are. And the, um, the king is, like we said today, is your, um, your energy that moves you forward, the uh, masculine side of us, the part that initiates and moves forward, um, projects, things like that. The ace is your higher self. Okay, and if you want, <clears throat> if you want a reading or, you know, to get more in depth into that, you can choose the Lemurian prophecy card readings, which are channeled with the cards. And I would love to do that with you folks. It's so much fun. And um, I have a, a, one particular lady that comes every year on her birthday to do a little more prophecy card reading for the next year. And it's so much fun. Um, anyway, I hope that answers Donna. And I hope that gives you a pathway forward to, to use the prophecy cards because they're, they're wonderful. Um, I also want to thank, well, I don't have it here, but thank the Sedona Journal of Emergence for uh, publishing uh, my channel articles every month. I'm so grateful. And they also have an announcement of this program there in their, uh, in their journal. And I, I'm grateful all the time to Melody and all the people in Flagstaff at Sedona Journal. I love you. Um, our next program is, will be the first Saturday of February, February 5th. And we'll, we'll see what we'll be talking about then. A lot can happen in a month, can't it? Um, let me just make sure that there's no questions before we, we um, sign off here today. I've really enjoyed being with you. And if you have any questions, you can put them in Facebook Messenger. You can email me at Karina at KarinaNielsen.com. There's also um, an email um, contact link on my website. Um, I've had a wonderful time with you today. Thank you for all the great questions. And um, I hope that you will enjoy this beautiful month of creation. You're welcome, Donna. Um, it's, it's such an exciting time and you think, oh my God, we're going into another surge. And <laughs> yeah, we are, we are. And um, here's something we could take away uh, from, from this light worker. We, we're talking about shining our light, being in love. Um, we, we're, we're, we're not clear on things that could come up. I mean, who could have said that, you know, we're gonna have this kind of variant, you know, it's gonna do this to our lives and this and that. Be wherever you are now, just be there, okay? Be there and, oh, we got somebody coming in last minute. Okay, we'll let Grace in. Okay, <laughs> here you go. Uh, we're, we're not quite, we're uh, almost done, Grace, but welcome. Um, be where you are right now. Get into your heart and remember that you're a light worker. And remember that we're going to be challenged, that the lawnmower is going to start. And the lawnmower is coming. But whenever you feel like the blades of grass, that you, you're being cut down, or you, you're feeling afraid because the lawnmower is coming, just know that you can get into your heart and pump up your light. And even if you have a difficult situation, you're gonna get through it. You, you're gonna get through it. And Carl Fred always liked to say, five or 50, five or 50, do the five or 50 journey never quit. So that means five steps or 50. And we talk about this in the Signature Cell Healing Workshop. Life can be very challenging. 
And maybe it's going to take you five steps to get through whatever you're, whatever's happening for you right now. Maybe it'll take 50. But even if it takes 500, don't give up. Just keep going. There are people around you. I'm here. <laughs> Email me, you know. Um, <clears throat> there are people around you um, that can help. And you also have the light within your own heart that will get you through these really what feel like challenging times sometimes. So I, I love you all so very much and so grateful that you joined us.